Hey guys, Steve here. Today we got a look at Tier 3 Russian Battleship Gangit. Uh, Kedrov on the screen here. Cunningham and JoJo's inspirations. You can you can make a pretty strong case that neither of those are necessary. These Russian battleships seem to be like they're designed to kind of shoot pretty accurately at about 11 kilometers, give or take, maybe a kilometer or two on either end of that. Uh, whether you whether or not you need Cunningham or not, I don't know. Penetration seems pretty good, so whether or not you need JoJo, I don't know. My battleship commanders aren't as leveled as some of my other classes, so my choices for inspirations, especially for brawler builds, which I don't have a lot of developed yet, pretty low. You could look at Jellico, you could look at guys like Sheer, Lee, uh, Nelson, improving, you know, decreasing damage, improving lifespan, improving damage con, reducing fire chance, stuff like that. These are, you know, they're kind of mid-range brawlers. It seems to be the play style so far. So you can kind of spec them out with that in mind. Again, I just got what I got. So what's going on with the Gangit here? I've only shot at this thing with the Gangit so far. Seems like if it's angled against the Gangit, it does really well. If it's not, it takes some juicy damage. All we know for armor is the turret armor <laughs> is not quite as strong as the Germans, but a little bit stronger than the Japanese. That's all you can tell from the armor range that they give us in the game. So someday we'll get the armor view, and then we'll actually know what we're talking about <laughs> when it comes to that. Uh, torp reduction, very low though, 9%, keep that in mind. So destroyers you're going to have to pay attention to. 4x3, 305s. Uh, so we do have a decent amount of firepower on this. My range on this build, just shy of 12. Now, again, that's kind of where we're trying to get it, trying to be firing anyway. So, specking these out for long range. Whether or not it works, you'll have to let me know if you're running Lev Galler. Uh, you can, on this ship or any of the other ships, let me know how he performs beyond that. But supposedly, the range drops off quite a bit. Reload a bit long, 32.4. Uh, let's see, we got a shot up on the Kohlberg here. Broadside, tier 2. He gone! <laughs> Fairly predictable results, but so is enjoyable nonetheless. Uh, turret verse, pretty damn good, actually. 37.1. You can compare that to something like uh, 51.4 on the NASA, 54.5 on the Corbet. Uh, so you see some pretty outrageous numbers at this tier. Uh, so good turret verse there. HE damage, 4,500, kind of middle of the pack. Fire's chance, 33%, you know, whatever. We're shooting AP, we're not dinguses. Uh, speaking of the AP, 8600, so kind of middle of the pack in the damage. So, guns, again, you kind of want to get them into the 10 to the 12 kilometer range, it seems like. Phoenix coming around broadside here, let's see what we can do to him. Ding him up pretty good, looks like. Speed, decent, 23 knots. Uh, turn radius, high at the tier. Rudder shift, lowest at the tier, so... Soviets, big turning circles, quick rudder shifts, seems to be their design uh, philosophy. And concealment, decent, 12 kilometers. So, anyways, getting into this game here, we already got 33k, and uh, the Phoenix is pushing in. We want to get rid of him, prevent him from taking that cap. Now, you can see initially we went up to support A, and then once that flank's been won, we're turning around, we're going back to defend the enemy. Uh, usually teams are going to just keep pushing forward. They don't ever turn around and go back to the base. It doesn't occur to them that, number one, that's where the enemy team is going to go because they're doing the exact same thing. Put it in forward and then just uh, aim down the sights and not know what's going on around them. So if you want to actually fight, guys, go back to the base because that's where the reds are going to go. And it'll prevent them from flipping the caps that you start with. So not only are you going to get more damage, more action, but you're actually going <laughs> to... Help your team score-wise, so secure your flank, go back and defend the base. That should be the default position. If the enemy is doing something else to dissuade you from that plan, then you react. But that's kind of the starting mentality that you should have in most matches. So, for domination, you know, both teams are kind of going around in a circle. If you can stop their push through their circle, then your team will get more capture points. You should be able to increase your uh, score lead that way. Capture the base mode, kind of the same idea, but a little bit different. Uh, most people have no idea how to win capture the base. Let's just put it that way. And uh, how you do it is you prevent them from capturing your base. Trying to capture the enemy base is usually the last choice. 
Anyway, getting back into here, we have a Arkansas Founders Edition on the left just popped down. I was briefly slowing down to get that ship, the uh, cruiser that's in the middle there, the low Kohlberg. Uh, but we primarily should be angled at that Arkansas. All right, you always got to identify who's the biggest threat. The Arkansas is right here. So we should be angling at him. This is not a very well played sequence. This is kind of greedy. I'm trying to prevent the Kohlberg from getting around here flanking. How big of a risk he is, I don't really know. But that Arkansas conceivably could really damage me quite a bit. Anyway, we do kill the Kohlberg, and now we're attempting to keep turning to resume angling against the Arkansas. But he's had one or two salvos now to blast me. Luckily for us, he just missed. But that's neither here nor there. Those are just kind of risky plays. I guess for battleships, we should really talk about armoring in here. I mean... This cruiser is demonstrating the power of armor angling to us by <laughs> doing the opposite. You know, it's very easy as a cruiser to say, all right, if we're broadside and we get shot, we blow up. Or once you learn about the concept of armor angling, then it's a predictable result. But battleships, you kind of have to have the angling mentality first. Like this Arkansas is the biggest threat. Now, we can get these front three guns. You can see right there in the diagram, that angle right there, we can get three guns on them. So that we can maintain our angling, our steep angling on the duel against this guy. We do not need to get that back gun in. That's a greedy play. You can do it if they shoot and then you open up, get the gun, re-angle after you fire, and then absorb the next salvo. If the timing works out for that sort of exchange and the enemy is going to keep giving it to you, then you can get away with it. But the smart play is just play those front front three guns, you know, absorb the damage. We'd rather be doing 75% damage output and be taking minimal damage in return than getting them from going 75% to 100% damage output but taking wicked shots uh, in return. Because you can see to get that back gun in, we have to go from a well-angled battleship to a roughly broadside battleship. So not only this ship, not only the Russian battleships, but that's kind of the mentality that you should have uh, as a battleship player. And you got to recognize that you are taking risks. You are being a little bit greedy by forcing yourself to get the full broadside uh, every time. I'm, I'm greedy of that as well. A good way for me personally to improve my battleship play is to resign myself to shooting less than full salvos more often than I do. But I'm usually trying to time my enemies or just be a little bit more aggressive. And that's how you get punished in return, by taking those wicked shots. So, battleships, one of your main roles is being angled, tanking damage for your team so that they're not shooting your cruisers, they're not shooting your destroyers, they're shooting you. But if you're angled, the damage is minimal, so you can get away with it. And on the totem pole of battleship rolls, tanking damage is higher than dealing damage. Yes, you want to punish broadside mistakes. You know, if we get this Arkansas broadside, of course, we're going to want to deal the wicked damage whenever possible. But if he's shooting back at us, we'd rather stay alive while dealing lower than 100% damage, but still doing some damage. Anyway, that's broad, broadside... Uh, <laughs> Broad broadside? That's broad uh, battleship thinking that needs to be incorporated in your game. The more it is, the more successful you'll be as a battleship commander. So now the Gangit is coming around here. We're going to be demonstrating through this sequence. He's going to be mostly broadside. We're going to be mostly angled. A little bit greedy right there, trying to get the fourth gun in. Didn't get punished for it too much there. But the Arkansas, we're, again, we're identifying... Who's the biggest threat to us right now? The Arkansas is not shooting at us. He's dealing with someone else, even though his guns are probably better than the Gangit. Uh, the Gangit is shooting at us, so we're angled at the Gangit. But um, once we're once we're dealt with the Arkansas, we're just shy of, I think, about 3K our base HP and damage here, which is roughly what we wind up getting. I think it's about 120, 130, somewhere in that range. Anyway, getting back to this Gangit here. This will be a good demonstration of if you don't angle these Russian battleships, you're going to get uh, severely punished for it. If you do angle them, that's how you play them. 
So we're going to be <laughs> doing our best there. That's what you want. You know, we, we're taking the shots on the cheeks, at least in the Nikolai one on this. And I think, you know, based on what I've been reading up and down the line, that's going to be kind of the play style. You want those shots coming in on your well-angled cheeks. He's giving us pretty much a full broadside. Trying to angle him a little bit there, but we blapped him, man. We blapped him hard. As soon as we get that shot off, we're going to be turning back in towards him. You don't want to just be sitting there sailing in the straight line. Get those shots off. And, you know, the smart money is don't even get that back involved. It's just due to the fact that he's, he's shooting first. Then we have enough time to close the angle up again. There, another one. You know, he missed a bunch of them, but he did hit us some. And no damage. We're going to shoot him again, basically broadside. The results are predictable. So... That's a look at the Gangit, guys. Hope you did enjoy it. If you did, please hit the thumbs up. If you're new to the channel, you should consider subscribing. A lot of World of Warships coming all the time. Questions, comments, leave them below. I do love to hear from you. And we'll see you all later. All right, peace.